This video is going to show the process of making patterns for our shoe project that we're doing in Ceramics One. Using a pattern will help you have accuracy. The first thing you want to do is always photograph your shoe from multiple directions so you have, that, have it as reference. Then you're going to ins insert your shoe into one of the shoe protectors that we have because we're going to be putting tape over it and we want to protect the shoe. Now if you have parts of the shoe that aren't getting covered by the shoe protector, please protect that by taking, say, just like a paper towel and you can um, cover up that part again so the tape won't damage it. If you have something larger, like this boot, I put some plastic wrap around the shaft of the boot to help keep that uh, protected and also, again, a piece of paper towel in an exposed area. First step is I'm going to hold that paper towel in place. So I'm just going to put a, a little X of tape over that. And then the next step is I'm going to kind of uh, go around the opening of the shoe. I want to make sure that that's a strong uh, kind of opening. And then I'm going to just tape everything, overlapping the tape, alternate your directions, whatever way it works. You want to make sure that your shoe has been defined at the opening though, because that's going to be the top of your pattern. And as you do this, make sure that you get all the areas, including the sole. We are covering up everything. If you have a heel, like in the case this was a heel, I'm just making it more of a continuous sole. I'm not worrying about having an angle direction with that heel. Now that is fully taped. Now I'm using my reference photograph and photographs that I had, and you're going to carefully draw out your patterns. Now, as you do this, you want to, uh, again, keep referring to your pictures as reference and draw out the different panels that would be making up the shoe. If you have a thicker sole that we're not going to be using, I just kind of draw that so I can cut that off. Now, be very careful as you're cutting. If you have laces, you probably would have already taken your laces out or taped them down. I follow those lines, cutting through the shoe protector, because the shoe protector is what is holding together the tape, and you're cutting off all of these panels. Now, you want to make sure that you're keeping your panels straight so you don't forget what panel is for what area. And you can even slip the shoe out and do this after you have um, it drawn. And then I am outlining the edge of the sole because I'm, I need, need to cut off that edge. That is going to not be used as a pattern. That's just going to be trash. Okay, now I have all of my patterns cut out. You can see there's my shoe form. Sometimes you might have a very thick sole. So when you make your patterns, you would uh, make it come right down to the sole. Don't worry about the thickness that you would draw because this would be the base that we make for the shoe. And like in the case of this, it's not quite so thick because it would be cut out. Now, if you have a shoe that's like an, a converse type of a shoe, so this is just a rubber um, over the edge you would make the pattern come all the way down, okay, to the bottom. So you would bring this around to the bottom. Ignore this when you make the pattern. We, this would be something that would be just a, a decorative slab, a thin slab that we'd, we would put on. Because truly in this, your, your foot is down lower than the edge of the rubber. This rubber sticks up uh, beyond where your foot is sitting. If you have a shoe, say it has, you know, some thin slabs like this, if you're, if you're making patterns, so if this is one pattern, maybe the, the middle part, the tongue is another pattern, this is a pattern here, you don't have to worry about, don't make, say, this white panel a separate pattern. What we would do is after we have the shoe built, then we could actually add a thin decorative slab on this area, just putting it over the top so it kind of looks like that, that leather that was stitched. Also, with this sort of gym shoe, like if you have any sort of gym shoe where, again, you have rubber that's kind of coming up because, again, the sole where, like, your heel would be, it's down here, and this rubber is up above it. So just extend the patterns down a little bit farther as you are drawing it. Um, you want it to uh, come down, and then, again, 
the last little bit, you know, whether it's three eighths of an inch or whatever, that will be the base of the shoe when we first make it into clay. So you don't have to worry about making a pattern out of the rubber part. Uh, that, that sole will just be a little bit thicker here. And again, we do extend the patterns down um, uh, from the sides. Once you have the pattern cut out, if your sole is too big to trace on a regular piece of paper, please trace it on the larger legal size paper so it can fit. Um, use whatever paper is appropriate to yours. Now, when you have something cupped like this, like it's very uh, bumpy there on the toe because that is cupped, you can always extend the pattern a little bit. You can see I just made it a wee bit longer in the front uh, to accommodate the fact that it has been curved and it's cupped. Now, if you're drawing the pattern piece, say like on this tongue, the tongue is really narrow. I know the tongue of the boot is bigger than that. So when I go to transfer it on the paper, I need to make sure that I'm actually widening it to accommodate the actual width of the tongue and it can fit a lot better. Once all of the pattern pieces have been traced onto paper, then you can determine if you would like it to be enlarged or shrunk on the copy machine. So this person determined it was very large. They wanted it to be 65%. So they put in the 31 centimeters and then multiplied it by 0.65 on a calculator to determine what the final length would be. And then we shrunk it on the copier. Write down the percentage that you would like and identify your papers and I will copy them for you.